Welcome to this edition of Diaspora Central. I am Gil Inglés and I am in the studio today remotely from New York City, one of Congo's best choreographers, musician, and slash producer. This brother definitely makes it happen. This man, it's all about African movement. Nkumu, yes. well, welcome to Diaspora yes, Central. To, <laughs> all right, you sound, you sound a little bit cold, a little bit in shock. Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I, I remain calm because I face big adversity in life. So there you go. Nothing me here. There you go. And I'm glad to hear that because this is what this is all about. Diaspora Central, it's about doing nothing else but promoting and showcasing diaspora culture and diaspora talent. I'm glad that you were able to join us today. We're going to have a very brief conversation with you. It's going to be approximately four segments in which we're going to showcase some of your works also in the breaks. But I want to take you through the journey, the journey that actually made out Nkumu Katalai, the man that today we know as Nkumu. I understand that your official name is Isaac? Uh, well, official as far as the, the document is concerned. Uh -huh. um, but the spirit calls me Nkumu. That's Nkumu. Most important. Nkumu is the name. And we, we go with Nkumu. If the spirit calls you Nkumu, then you are Nkumu. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Now, what language is that? Uh, is it in, is in Lingala. That is Lingala. Lingala. Okay. And what, what does it mean? It, it, it connotates into three things. Okay. All compressed. Kumu literally means elder. Okay. But it also means king. And it also has a connotation of wise. Okay, so so you basically are elder wise king. Yeah, you know, because uh, every king embodied the Kumu in them. There you go. And if you're a king, you gotta have Nkumu. the leadership, the elder earth, uh, elderly uh -huh. uh, and, and the wisdom. The wisdom. There so you go. Kumu, the word embodies all that. So it's not just about the crown, it's about a lot more than the crown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Listen, uh, let's go back because I want to start on the little Nkumu, okay? Mm. The, the one in Congo, where mm -hmm. you were born, where did you go to school? What were your major influences in music? Mm. I was born and raised in Kinshasa, the capital city of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Kinshasa, if you know, African music uh, story or history mm -hmm. it is within its own. It stands alone as a, another metropolitan for music and culture because within Congo, Congo had so much commerce right. and so much potential as it, it was beginning its independence. Many people from many nations came mm -hmm. there to work right. in whatever uh, businesses that was happening. We're talking West African, we're talking Northern, we're talking even people from Asia. Mm -hmm. And then within Congo itself, Kinshasa absorbs all the tribal, the tribes of Congo. Got so you. on its own, it's a very diverse city. Okay. And and therefore very, very musical. Mm -hmm. uh, that nurtured my my experiences. But I was also born from, because uh, my mom is from Congo. Okay. My dad is from Guinea. Got you. Which Guinea? Conakry. Conakry. Okay. From mm -hmm. From Conakry, so I was born and raised in Congo, uh -huh. and I was raised with my Congolese culture because my dad was not really around there. Got uh, you. Per se. Okay. Uh, so I'm saying it to say because I was only raised in Congolese culture uh -huh. through my mom. Right. Her, both her mom and dad's side uh -huh. possess uh, traditional healing in the family. Okay. Uh, so with with those tradition comes a lot of music and ceremony so these, these are something that i i grew up with you know at time you have the drummers like all the traditional drummers in your grand you know grandmom's home for all these different ceremonial stuff so i grew up listening to the sound of the drum from home got you and my great my grandma my grandmother on my mom's dad's side she practiced what we call zebola the, the rite of passage you know she did those traditional ways she trained uh, dancer. Actually, the word dancer okay. took a, a, a connotation of zebola. Like when you say kofi, you say bana zebola. Okay. I'm talking about the, the coming of age, but it took a connotation of dancers as well. Because my grandma, you know, trained young ladies and, and she was also a traditional healer. So a lot of wonderful drummers, like the best in town, came home. Uh, and then, you know, even my mom at the young age, they were all trained by, by that. 
Gotcha. And on my mom's mom's side, her biggest sister inherits the traditional healing. So it was also something like I've learned drum from just drumming and tools that was already in the family. Okay. So and then inside that, mm -hmm. Congo itself is very musical. Right. Everywhere you listen to music, every other left and right avenue have bands or churches. Mm -hmm. So there's constant music. Right. So then as you growing up, really your major influence, your major musical influence was really traditional um, music from the the location where you were. The, the, were there any other, let's say, pop artists like, um, or, or let's say urban known artists that also influenced you? Well, in, in Congo, it has to be a combination. Uh -huh. I had to note the traditional element because it was within the family. Okay. This is to say musically, before any other nurturing, mm -hmm. it was like, a, I'm a witness of it, like firsthand. Right. It's not like, you know, for other people to come to our family home, they had to ask for, you know, permission. Okay. But I didn't have to ask for permission. It was there. In front right. Of me. So secondly, in Congo, you get the best of both because Kinshasa is a, is a metropolitan. Mm -hmm. By grouping all the tribal groups, the mixing of us creates our modern uh, sound. Right. So you are exposed to traditional music very, very, you know, you know, strongly. Right. And then you're exposed to all the modern music. Because right. Congolese the urban, we're really well known. The, the urban know, Congolese uh, culture, basically. Yeah. All right. Now. Right. So you have bigger names. Like I remember growing up. Mm -hmm. You listen to everything. You listen to Franco. You listen to Taboulé. Right. You listen to Grand Calais. You listen to Vicky Longomba. You listen to, you know. But now the music of my generation yeah. was blasted by the Wenge Musica. You know, okay. Era. Okay. Uh, you know, Congo's, you know, solo artists are now. Right. Congo was known for his band thing. You know right. I mean? Right. Like Gang Kali was an is, is, is an artist, but you knew him as a band leader. Right. Like we band, like Congo is known for band. Right. It's now you're seeing single artists like yeah, was, solo, solo art, solo like acts. That. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, which is which is a which is a pretty great <laughs> it's a pretty great thing and interesting thing because you also are one of those individuals that very actually to be honest with you I don't think I've seen you perform by yourself yet you normally perform with a band with a live band mm -hmm. okay now is, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know my, my vision is broken down in so many fractions got you including solo duet trio quartet mm -hmm. quintet and then he goes into orchestral. So um, a lot of events that I do sometimes, right. I'll have just me on the drum. Okay. Uh, you know, either edu you know, like in in cultural centers, in schools, and right. In those elements. You know, yes, I've seen I by myself. Yeah, I've uh, seen I have seen you on those workshops. I've seen you on those mm -hmm. workshops doing it by yourself. But I mean, in actual performances, you normally with a band, including dancers. Mm -hmm. I've done playback, you know, but you know, as a Congolese. Right. You know, we're working on doing playback, but it's not really our favorite thing. To do. I, I, to I totally understand. Now, one, uh, one thing that I, I believe every fan probably wants to know, are you more inclined to be a producer or a choreographer? So well, is it I'm music or dance? Which one, which one are you more inclined to? So let's say if you had to pick one of the two, which one of the two was you? Well, I'm an artist. Okay. That, that globalized mm -hmm. a lot of things. Uh, when I say, even in my bio, artist, orator, mm -hmm. multi-instrumentalist, right. and social activist, right. not, none is, is without the other. Like right now, I'm functioning as an artist who's an orator. Right. Like I am speaking uh, and making things come to life mm -hmm. as far as what kind of things, you know, my vision and, and things that I do. Uh, this is now the artist as an orator. So I cannot say... Like take the you know because I'm not playing any instrument now. Right. Take the uh, take the musician out of me. Mm -hmm. So that's the same way. Uh, I'm just an artist with a big A. That's simple as that. An artist with a big A. Listen yeah. on on that note, we're gonna go ahead and take our first break because I believe that our fans wanna hear some of that big A notes that you have to offer them. Uh, which one of your songs would you like to play? I understand you have a few videos in the market right now. Which one of your videos would you like to showcase? I like to always show love to Congo first, so Congo for you okay. will be the song you know you guys could play you know first because it's really you know that's my common denominator. 
Um, Got you. All right, so let's go into Congo for you. So Congo for you, and that's gonna be our first showcase by Nkumu Katalai, right here on Diaspora Central with Gil English. We'll be right back. I was for you, all humanity. Congo, yeah, 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 yeah. The Congo's for you, all humanity. Congo, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. On Diaspora Central with Gil Inglés, if you have just joined us, we have Nkumu Katalai by way of Congo from New York City on the line with us via Zoom. Nkumu, let's mm. go into your youth. Let's go mm -hmm. into that time in which you discovered music within you and you determined that that was the professional thing that you had to start or the professional career that mm -hmm. you had to follow. When did that happen? How old were you? Where were you and what triggered it, in your opinion? Well, uh, for me, it's funny because everything linked to my very young, early days because okay. I, I, I was blessed with the ability to, to speak clearly as a youngster and then secondly, with the ability to dance clearly since I was young. Okay. So one of those, when I get to a party, I'm dancing. I don't dance for people. I dance because it made me happy. Okay. But I was precise. Uh, I, I didn't juggle from dancing. I was precise since day one. So in, in, you hear people say, oh, Janine's son is here. Like, they're always amazed on whatever I, I was doing. But me, my focus was never there. My focus was, it feels good to do this. So it yeah. has always been that. It feels good to do this. Mm -hmm. That That's my aim in, you know, in everything, why, why I love music. You know why I like to express to it um, because I, I've been uh, invited by people who are older than me since '87 okay. to join them in the dance group, and you know I discover my this I'll, I'll listen to the drum, but I discover my talent for it because it helped me recover because I almost got paralyzed when I was oh. young. I believe it was in uh, 1988 uh, because of malaria. A, a nurse supposed to give me like a quinine shot at okay. home. Okay. That quinine shot went into the wrong direction for some reason. It neutralized my two feet. Oh, gracious. So I, ha I had to stay home. I had to relearn how to walk while I was home because everybody went, went, goes, went to school. Right. And I'll hear all the churches now for the first time because all this time I'm not home. I'm in school. Right. And when we're not in school, is, is the summertime where we all playing around. So right. It's like that quiet moment where I couldn't walk, I took a, a five liter bottle, plastic bottle that mm -hmm. was empty. Okay. I practiced the drum on everything I ever heard, like never before. That was like my epiphany of Got just it. the natural skills that is burnt because when you listen to something so much, right. you inherently know it without knowing, you know? Right. Uh, I play all the songs. It became my comfort. So and drumming, right? So ba so basically, so basically, drumming or percussion really becomes your port of entry into musical artistry. Mm -hmm. Dance, okay. I would say, mm -hmm. uh, is what started because dance right. already used to bring even people who were older than me to take me around town to join the dance. P prior school. prior to drum, right? Once you, know, you go, once six. you become paralyzed, you you. You you yeah, basically you know, going to I, I drum I drum because that's the only thing I can you know right do but drum <laughs> and listen to music and it is in ninety four 
90, one or two, because I also did rap a lot back home. Okay. I used to dance hip hop for a oh. long time. Okay, so you, you are B-boy. Like back in those days. Right, so you are a B-boy then. You, you, we didn't call it that. Okay. We, we used to call ourselves chickens. Chickens. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the Congolese okay. people. No, 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 but say, but say, say it in French though. What's the French, what's the French or, the, or the Lingala word for it? No, but it was just, you were mimicking American sounding words. We don't, we don't have a Lingala word for it. You're so either a hip hop dancer, Okay. Or you, you know, but we used to call ourselves also just beat it. You know how Mike just Jackson beat it. used right. to say just beat it? Yeah, just beat it. But we heard it as just, just feel it. So they call gotcha. it just feelings. Like those who dance hip hop used to be called just feelings. <laughs> I told I totally I totally understand. So they started all. Okay. They started all and in in ninety one, ninety two we started to become more into rap. Mm -hmm. So in ninety three we made a shift. I made my first shift into rap. In ninety four I decided because I was you know, practicing the drum set, right. I decided to shift my music. I'm like, oh, That's American music. I'm gonna focus on what is home. From there, I never look back. Got you. I started to play in bands. First, I started to, you know, because when we started doing hip hop, mm -hmm. some of us were drum set player as well. We'll play drum live because we didn't have piano right. program right. music to sequence. Only to play some melody. Mm -hmm. So we would play live. So some of us started to cover our own band. Like it would be like five of us in the same band. All right. of us know how to play the drum set. So some song I'll go, other song friends will go, you know, things like that. Got you. And, and from there, I decided to focus solely on Congolese music. Okay. And I never looked back. So from 94. On, on. So yeah. at, that, at that point, you're approximately eight years old, you said? No, I'm 94. Ni I'm 94. You're 13. Okay. Yeah. So you're 13 years old. So from that point, you basically go, what was your first professional uh, performance? Well, first performance, uh, it was as a youngster. I was like six or seven. Okay. Like I said, all the people will call me yeah. to dance in the group. Got so you. So I'll practice with them and then we go perform. Yeah, but do, do you remember Do you remember where you went to perform and what, what city it was in? But in Kinshasa still. Everything okay. Everything here is in Kinshasa. Do you remember? I, I do remember you... We went to uh, perform for this school that was called uh, Manda. Mm hmm like all the major dancers from throughout Kinshasa, like the big names, Okay, and they were all there. So this group of my elders, their style was more of a Janet Jackson style. Like okay. Control. But I used to dance more Hans Hammer style. Okay. So I became like the element that would create the difference in their style. Got so you. So they'll bring me, like I'll do like interlude, things like that, and I'll, and I'll improvise because I had so many steps, you know. Got you. Uh, and we also had our own groups. Okay. Now, and so uh, somebody who believed in me start, started a group for me where I was the captain of the group, you know, to go on competitions, you know, all around town. Okay, who was that individual? Ah, uh, Gizi. Okay. That's my man. Was, his name was Gizi. Gizi. You know? All right. Yeah, I bet, I bet you even till today when he sees me on TV, he's like, yeah. I'm not surprised. Right. That's my name. Right. And, and, th and that's important for us. See, that's it's important for us to mention names, not only of people and also groups, because the purpose of this show is really to trace a DNA. We want to know all those pieces that have helped make Nkumu or the artist who's, who's, uh, who happens to be our guest that artist we we like to hear the names we like to hear the stories we like to hear the locations where those stories happen we like to hear the feelings if yeah i have to be story wise yeah to be even, even more specific right got you in 1986 mm -hmm. our family uh, uh my my he's like my uncle daddy you know we from the same generation he's like three years older than me okay but he was into hip-hop a lot he came into a, a family party mm -hmm. Me, I dance Congolese dances naturally. That's what I do. Okay. And suddenly I'm seeing this guy just doing all this. I was like, what is this sort of dance? Then I found as an American dance. Okay. I started to learn hip hop from there. By 97, uh, my my stepdad had a cousin who came to stay with us. Mm -hmm. His name was Patience. Okay. He had, they had hip hop groups in the school because where we were living, we had like a place that was... Uh, had a space for dancer to practice. Mm -hmm. He called in all his friends. Those days, I believe the uh, uh, ha, push it, push it real good. Like those days where the song, you know, song was really involved. Got you. So 
uh, we started to call the dance push it. I learned push it with them. So he introduced me to really like to hip hop being something in Kinshasa that was big. Got you. So from there, uh, I went on, you know, dancing. Or I even trained people because I just I was very dexterous. Okay. So so yeah. so that that's when you that's when you started to gain your passion for choreographing yeah. and teaching people how to dance. Yeah. Okay. So I even taught somebody back then. He was older than me. His name was Lufu Luabo. Mm -hmm. Lufu was so focused on hip hop, he became the best dancer in Kinshasa. When I started my team, because then I was right. a youngster, so mm. I can't really focus. He was older already, so he could dance everywhere. Right. Me, I had to go to school. <laughs> he became the choreographer for my team when I started the team. Just, oh, that's you know, great. That's... He became so good. That right. Won competition, but I'm the one. Who, who started, taught him? He dance, you, know, <laughs> dance, you know, when he, he wanted to learn. Right. But like, this is my story. It's like my first semi mentoring, you know, Got sort you. of story. Yeah. And then from there, I met, you know, Patrick. Patrick introduced me to uh, his group that took me to that uh, Manda school that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. From there, I met, uh, uh, what was his name? Another Patrick, uh, I forgot his last name, is Mutombo Dikembe's uh, cousin. Okay. Uh, Dubois, Patrick Dubois. Okay. So, like, they, they used to dance the Janet Jackson style. Right. So I got introduced to those style, which it was not really my, you know, favorite per se. Uh -huh. I was more on the Hans Yammer style and Bobby gotcha. Brown. And gotcha. And then I got trained by my former soccer player. His name... Uh, so he was your Chibu. soccer coach? He Be became our hip-hop coach, okay. you know, for a while. And then from there, I started my own group, uh that I started to compete with. I even ended up in being in competition where two and all the rest got you know, you. Where. So from there I made a shift uh -huh. to playing Congolese music. All right. Strictly Congolese music. Right. Started to, you know, starting our own band at the youngsters. Because you know, yeah, I live in different boroughs because mm -hmm. I have family in different boroughs. So every bar you went, when they just discover you're a drummer, people want you to be in the band. So I was part of many bands, but I'm always a member of a traditional band. Not like a singer, mm -hmm. but a member, somebody, because, you know, I was a very courageous young man. Right. I knew how to make a dollar here and there right. uh, back home. So I'll support those traditional groups because many, you know, will struggle for me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I was always a member, but I, I, I didn't play traditional music outside except in the family. Got you. But I mostly played for contemporary bands. Got you. Like that's what I, the one you see me play. So I grew right. up right. in that. Okay. And I was, I was discovered quickly also by some of my elders who was, because a lot of bassists will call me to practice with them because I was a drummer. Got you. For them to have a right, you know, tempo. Right. And then we started to, as uh, I got invited for the first time to play for a gospel uh, group. Mm -hmm. We went to play in the church. The church kept me when they let the group go. Right. We're talking, this is like 93, 94 still. Like all this is happening in the, in the era. And I was the drummer there before even leaving, you know, so America in 96. Got like, you. Uh, that's where I started to now have access to actual drum set because, when we played, we didn't have access to this. Oh, that's that. You make that up your stuff. That's and interesting. I remember that's interesting. But let's let's take um Nkumu. Let's mm -hmm. let's take let's take another quick break. But before I go, there's one name that you forgot to mention, which is the name of your uncle, who taught you, who showed you the first um I guess American dance moves at a family party. Uh, Daddy Nini. His name is Daddy Nini. Daddy Nini. Okay, so with that, we're gonna take another quick break, and uh, we gotta showcase something else of yours. Do you have another video that you would like to showcase? Which one of that is it? Uh, clear my path. Uh -huh. uh, it's a new track that I came out with. Uh, clear my path. Um, you know, it's an oxymoron saying, you know, both God and your enemy. Right. You need them all to clear your path. Got but you. you know, God must be your path, but your enemy as well. Yes, indeed. So it's an oxymoron. Uh, all right. So let, let's go into Clear My Path by Nkumu Katalai right here on Diaspora Central.
you have just joined us, you are listening to Diaspora Central with Gil Inglés and my guest today is Nkumu Katalai by way of Congo from New York City, Nkumu. <laughs> now, for those of the listeners that have just joined us, you basically get your starting, uh, your, your, your starting point in Congo, Kinshasa. You start in a family gatherings. You start traditional drumming with grandmother, parents, and everybody else in the family. Eventually, you make your way through town as one of the best or one of crew members of uh, hip hop and um, urban, I should say, urban pop music dancers. And eventually, one incident that almost paralyzes you, introduces you into drumming. You start to play drums. You fall in love with Congolese drumming. And from that point on, you don't look back into American music any longer. But yet, uh -huh. a few years later, you find yourself in America. Uh -huh. Talk to us about that transition from Congo, Kinshasa, into what was your, uh, your, your, your city of, en of entry? Was it uh, New York City? Yes. Okay. So talk to us about that transition from Congo, Kinshasa into New York City. You know, I came in the U.S. I was 15. Mm -hmm. uh, a kid, a 15-year-old in Congo is like a 27-year-old in America. Okay. <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of, I mean, we all have different reality that we face. Right, right. But at 15... You have to learn to survive for your own. Right. You, 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 like, you, 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 uh, you basically a man. Yeah, you basically like you a grown man. You have to learn man. to vouch for yourself. Right. And you have to learn to protect yourself in those streets. You know, it's like it's so many levels of it. Right. Like your game has to be so sharp at that age. Mm -hmm. Like by the time you get, I got here, it was, I, it was as if I was trying to regain my innocence again. I mean, it was too late. But I had to, like for a while, I'll sit down. My dad was, you know, my dad invited me here. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll be the one buying food. I'm bored. <laughs> right. Because I was not used to sitting somewhere. Every people do things for me. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, and, you know, you regain, you know, you, you, you get access to the school. You're meeting other people because you go to a school where you are learning English first. Mm -hmm. Liberty High School, uh, 18th Street. Uh, you. The interesting thing about it is, a globe of us mm -hmm. meeting at one time. That was the most beautiful thing with New York right away. Right. Like you have Brazilian, you have a Haitian, you have a, uh, but you just name all these different places, Chinese here and there, like a block of different people mm -hmm. in one place at one time. Like okay. that was pretty interesting. Like, you, know, <laughs> we're from, you know, barely knowing anybody else to right. be in a school where many of us from different walks of life and different right. nations gather together you know that that became already like a good thing with new york because and then i got recruited for the police explorer i remember back in those days mm -hmm. and it became a block of us who grew up together who did all these things together okay. music took a secondary thing because my dad would see me always practicing the drum on my feet they would yell at me like we the yellows <laughs> yellows don't play the don't play music <laughs> music is played for us i said dad i grew up in the congo right <laughs> I oh, I just you, like, you know, hey. yeah. That's that's an interesting thing. So you are so so your paternal side is the Diallo side. Yeah, got you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so no, which is I'm interesting. Like that, I grew up in the Congo. Right. Like this is just in me. Like you're gonna have to bear with me. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, my dad himself he, he, he likes to collect music. I find him with a good repertoire. Mm -hmm. of, of sound. I think music also relaxed him a lot. Right. So I got to be exposed to a very big literature okay. right away because he collected like wonderful uh, repertoire of music that right. we listened to in the car when we drove. Got we, you. We, you know, we listened to music all the time. Got That's you. That's why I came to really discover Tupac because mm -hmm. for some reason he was already big. Right. I didn't discover him when I was in Congo because we were focused on artists that we liked. Wow. Like, Got you. Uh, like uh, the uh, the first crossover of rapper that was big, that all of them in the Congo was Snoop Dogg. Believe it or not. Oh wow! And that's uh, so that that was then yeah that was a bit after uh, that was a big a bit after well right around the same time as Tupac. Yeah, yeah. But Tupac yeah. was already big. But right. I remember in my memory who I knew strongly. It was Snoop. It was Snoop. <laughs> uh, but coming here, 
I yeah. discovered the voice of Tupac. Right. Man. Yeah, I think and, I think to see. I'm finding out this guy really passed away. Right. I was pissed. Oh like, wow. <laughs> and I listened to everything Tupac. Right. I'm like, who's this guy? Like, right. So. I mean, because I, I, we listen to music a lot in the mm -hmm. car with my dad, like he collected all of those. Gotcha. And then myself, because I needed to keep myself updated mm -hmm. to home, like I'm always collecting, you know, going to where they sell, you know, music from home gotcha. or go to Bridge and make a store back in the days, just yeah. listen, listen, mm -hmm. listen. So I, what kept me as a musician here, my best friend, John yeah. Lubila, okay. he, he, he found out that I played the drum. Because him and I met, you know, suddenly on the subway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my blood went like, Psh. I'm like, right. this guy looks like somebody I met in the Congo for some right. reason. My young brother sees him, thought I was weird. I said, let's move a little closer to him. Right. And I'm going to see. Because he was holding a keyboard. Right. And I sat on the train. I started singing. I like it, he's gonna have my day. Something from home. Right. He turned around. He's like, who's this Spanish guy singing? <laughs> <laughs> so we became best friends from there. And it ended up, I live on 150, he live on 149. Got so you. Got so you guys close by. Yeah. So I found a musical, you know, friends mm -hmm. who started to practice almost every day after school. We meet up, we play, play, right. play. And he told me, you know what? My church just purchased a drum, you know? Right. I'm like, you know, you know, the church is like, I left home, I was skeptical of churches and things. Yeah. But I was like, hey, but they have the drum set. I don't have any access to the drum, so I'm right. going to go. I started to go to the church and that's how I kept up now my skills, you know, I, I joined them in 97 mm -hmm. and by 98, I was made musical director. You know, we proceeded there until I left, uh, the church in 2004, right. Just to focus on, you know, cause then I was already touring with a lot of different big bands. Mm -hmm. Like I met this two stars here. Yeah. Uma Lopuco, Uma Lopuco, right. You know, I told me, you know, I played with them for like you know, years, like from like 2002, all the way to like 2007 and 8. Yeah. Uh, so I got back to churches in 2008, where I continued to play the role of a musical director. Now I'm just one of the elders in the church, meaning uh, I have other people leading, mm -hmm. but I'm just like that voice. You, you, give, you give you give know, that wisdom. That yeah. Yeah. Then direction. Now, one one of the quick, one of the quick, <laughs> one of the funny, one of the funny and interesting things, and one of the names that you mentioned, you mentioned Guma and uh, Lokasa Yambongo. Um, mm -hmm. These are individuals that I personally know. I, I know, and I got to know them because they used to record at our studio in Washington, D.C. with a brother of yours from Congo named Blaise Tangelo that right now is in, in Belgium. So you probably know Blaise, right? So you know Blaise. Okay, you've yeah. been you've been to uh, the studio in DC also. Mm -hmm. I recorded, yeah, we recorded a few things there. Okay, uh, so then, yeah. so then you you and I should know each other from way back then, and I, the only time I remember you from is from the festival. Yeah, but sometimes it happens like that, you know? right? You know what I mean? And that's a good I, thing. You know, I, I was there a couple of times. We did some a lot of work, you know. Uh, wow. You know, even for Jumbo, I recorded some. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah, in Jurbon Tuta, yeah. Tuta, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, I'm the one Great. who played the drum in Fire. Oh uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I know I know all of these guys because they basically came into our facility, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So which is see that is good. It's like small world, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. very small world. But you know what? We gotta we gotta take another quick break um, and showcase something else of yours. Now I know that you are an instructor and you you have um, good lessons, and I, I kind of want to showcase something educational of yours, and, and it doesn't have to be that big, anything within mm -hmm. a minute to three minutes, something that you you probably have taught your students before and that you may have available on your um, on, on your um, teaching tools. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think you want to do? Um, and I know you you are multi-instrumentalist, you play bass, you play drums, you, you play guitar. Um, mm -hmm. Do you also play horns? Well, horns is, is my next. Dream. That's your that's your next. I, I that's like your to next. Set. Got you. No, you do the arrangement. Yeah, as a producer, I right? I haven't learned how to play them. Yet. Got you. Okay. Got you. But um, yeah. But uh, let let's go ahead and teach um uh, maybe dance um what, what you what do you want to teach our audience? Because um we do have a television audience also aside from our radio audience. We have a television audience that watches the program. Uh, quick, quickly, if I have to give people a theory, I develop a, a theory, especially to teaching Anglophone. Mm -hmm. Because Anglophone, you, you, you count in different time. Okay. Because you know you, you listen to music differently. Right. Than many others. Mm -hmm. uh, like like for Francophone Africans, uh, 
they, they don't they don't uh, dance rhythm the whole rhythm. You know, okay. Anglophone dance rhythm. Okay, like so, describe. Okay, we we uh, let, let, let's go into a break. Let's showcase something of yours. Which video do you want us to play, and then let's come back to that. Don't forget what you're talking uh, but about because. This is a constant video, uh, mm -hmm. a sister from Cameroon did, which okay. kind of globalized all. Like it, it went into a concert that I was doing, mm -hmm. went into a teaching. Okay. Uh, there's also one uh, video there where I'm actually uh, rehearsing with a dancer. We were okay. preparing for uh, show for the African uh, student college. Uh, college uh, what is it? Uh, Brooklyn College. Brooklyn College. Okay, so there was a dance, uh, dance, dance body movement um, class, basically. Yeah. It okay. Was me on a, a drum, and and then I joined one of my dancer. Okay. And there's also a print in there where the sister kind of cover from my class to mm -hmm. what I do, like overall in New York. Got you. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into this quick break and showcase some of uh, Nkuma, Nkumu Catalyze um, teaching tools. We'll be right back with Diaspora Central with Gillen Glass. The last on then this side, that side, and my name is Kumu Katalai. Um, I am uh, an artist. My medium is music, dance. Pop, is it pop? You you gotta practice your pop. Everything is like this. No. Like this. E E A A A E A A E A E No, it's not going this way. It's going this way. Going this way. I live in I'm shaped by both New York and Kinshasa. A multiplicity of culture here uh, give me enough literature in from those observation and looking and from uh, the materialization of things. So New York became the library that I could dive in in a bigger spectrum. <laughs> And we are back. If you have just joined us, you are listening to Diaspora Central with Gil Inglés. And my guest is Nkumu Katalai by way of Congo in New York City, joining us via Zoom. Nkumu, before we yes. went into a break, you were talking about um, the different methods that of accounting. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go go ahead and go into that. D describe that for our for our listeners now, because um, I interrupted Please, you, you as you were in the process of that. I can't stand up here and teach them, but I wanted to teach them yeah. an approach mm -hmm. that they could have in sound okay. when they are dancing, especially Congolese dance, because Congolese dance doesn't require for you to dance in staccato. Staccato is like ta 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 ta. So many anglophones mm -hmm. tend to dance Congolese dance with a lot of. Ah, ah, staccato. Right. So Congo is very smooth. It's very strong, but it's very smooth. Right. So I developed uh, what I call the N1 tactic. Okay. So instead of counting one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. one, you're going to count one, two, three, and. And that end is the breath. Got you. One, two, three, and one. Two, Got three, you. And Got one. So the end function as a transitional element at all costs. Got so you. So you could actually use it to create transitional element that is a little bit more smooth. Mm -hmm. So, and one, and one, and two, and. Got the you. And it's functioning as a breath. Right. So, in order to dance smoothly, the breath has to be respected. It yeah. can be by chance. Right. Because when you count one, two, three, four, yeah. by going to one, your four is making your breath into a ha. Right. So, it creates a strong accent. Right. So at least you won't survive in Congolese dance. I got you. <laughs> you survive in hip hop because yeah. you know these are African dance that has crossover to a, a different methodology. Mm -hmm. They still African dance, right. but because of the different environment, right. the method is ta 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 ti ta. But us is ta ta because we dance in six A. Yeah. Even though the count is four. Got you. It's 
tati tati tata ti tata tati ti tati. So in order to get that six A loop, right, you have to breathe and and on, so your transition can be smooth. Got so you. That's one wisdom. Got you. From yeah. Home, yeah. Indeed. Now, one one of the things that a lot of people that a, a lot of people don't um a lot of people today are, are even starting to forget is the influence of Congolese music in what we call today urban African music, right? If if we look well, at um, I mean, Dombolo, Dombolo is in everything right. for dancing uh -huh. modernly today. Right. Dombolo is inside of it. Uh, well, sometimes even when you forget, but uh -huh. people are not forgetting. People are just not aware. In the height, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, when not you're aware. Up in the height, right. You enjoying your moment. You right. don't have to take history, but when life will make you will ask you to be accountable, that's mm -hmm. where you have to go learn. There you, you know go. I mean? Right. So everybody's dancing today. Mm -hmm. They have to start doing interview just like me now. Right. They just have to know check the literature the, before they, coming in. There you so, go. And, and, and And that's part of the purpose of this show is really to ensure that we educating a generation that is coming to ensure that they are aware that prior to Afrobeat, prior to Coupe de Calais, prior to, I guess, what Southern Africans Azonto. called, Azonto. right, Azonto in Ghana, and then uh, prior to to Afro House in Southern mm -hmm. Africa, right, South Africa, Angola, That was Dombolo, right? No, or Kwasa, that was, was still, right, you know, like that is, right, 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 that is, no, no, that is quite true, and, and I stand corrected, you are quite correct, that is, that is Dombolo, which is, which is what we should consider the granddaddy of all of that African movement. Like of modern, of contemporary. Right, movement. right, urban, what right, Dombolo urban. Did, like, mm -hmm. To really share quickly. Right. It made simple how to convert almost every dance into a proper and very, very subtle transition. Because gotcha. the movement was just nice and simple mm -hmm. where the dancer connects the bouncing of the knees and the popping on the waist mm -hmm. and the movement of the shoulder. Okay. Those three elements, if you look at Zonto, right. it has that energy. Right. If you look, you know, Afro beating, it has that energy. It made it so simple for contemporary African dance right. to just be a dance that you don't have to worry about you knowing which culture it's coming from or like it made it gotcha. a dance for everyone. Right. Therefore, it created its own universal dance. feel. Right. right. Yeah, it became it And became a universal same. feeling thing. Mm -hmm. Even in the Congo when Numbulu came out, right. when we were growing up, you were, you were one of those rare breed who could just dance. Right. Everybody Congolese people dance, but some of us were just rare breed of people who dance. Right. But when Dombolo came out, it created a new breed of dancer, even in Congo. Got gotcha. Because it made everything simple mm -hmm. and accessible. Right. Now, you are an expert in the, in this kind of stuff, and and, and, and that's in, that in itself is a whole different show. But in your profile, I had to include a portion of that because one time you had shared something in regards to Congolese music. Oh. And it was a video that was talking about uh, Dombolo uh, and Kwasa uh, clarifying what was what. But my question to you is, for a Congolese mm -hmm. choreographer or musician or man of the mm -hmm. arts, a cultural, cultural expert, who, in your opinion, is the person responsible for Dombolo? Okay. Uh, we're going back again. The story goes from many areas, mm -hmm. right? No, Congolese have bands, mm -hmm. and then you have within the band, you have the artists who are, you know, those who bring the inspiration. Right. And then within that, you have the the, the cities, you know, the, the gara, where right. all these things comes out of. Right. Because Ndombolo is actually telling a story of many dances put together mm -hmm. that simplify into one element, right? Gotcha. Because So the band that came out with Ndombolo mm -hmm. as a tool right. was Wenge Musica. Okay. But the word Ndombolo, the inspiration, the original inspiration of Ndombolo mm -hmm. came from the late great Raja Kula who passed away. He's the one, all the movement you see Congolese people do, the, the, those pa, 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 those right. tricky movement. He's the one who came out with those. All, all the footwork and... Footwork, like right. Raja Kula is the creator of all that. So Ndombolo... Right. The word might have merged from his 
um, environment of, of dancer. Gotcha. But Kaluji, Tutu Kaluji, a mm -hmm. hype man from Wenge, okay. is the one who created a shout that we call Nomol. Gotcha. Nomol, Mama, Sonangile, Nomol, Nomol. Right. And and that and, and and that basically became the name of the 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 sound, right? Because he stayed almost twelve years in the market, or mm -hmm. like ten or twelve years in the market, right? Like it's the type of dance. And then I will also give Kofi credit because mm -hmm. Kofi was one of the elder. Gotcha. Even though he could create his own thing, but if something is popular right. and it works, he mimics it. Gotcha. So when Kofi mimicked Ndombolo. And then it, it started to become like every band is just repeating the same thing. Yeah. Like every group had their own version of Nomo. Right. So Nomo stay in the market for such a long time because every year it was a reinvention. Yeah. Nah, that's a, indeed. Indeed. That is great. Now, one, one question. As a diaspora artist, um, what is the challenge that you believe that you face as an African diaspora artist in the United States? And that you think uh, that either the community or the African institutions can probably assist or help better the process. But maybe I don't know everything yet. Uh -huh. the, the first thing I face okay. is, is on many levels. Gotcha. That, but the one major element is resources, right? Resources, okay. So maybe I'm, you know, because I, I focus as a musician. Got gotcha. you. And sometimes you want to cross over into the businessman, try mm -hmm. to run this, run that. It right. gets exhausting. Gotcha. Exhausting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, resources. And, and by resources and you mean financial resources, institutional resources, what 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 are all, all okay including tools, including like like I built my vision right with my single two hands. Right. Like with you know, money that I had to spend to make my vision run. Gotcha. If I had saved that money, probably I'll buy two homes. You there know you go. Mean? There you go. So uh in that sense, you know, you know So 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 you think then uh, basically what you're saying is the community needs better resource management well you know community i will not know you know like just artists need to tap into uh need to be able to tap into element that will allow them mm -hmm. you know some sort of support to leverage you know uh the ideas right uh but some of these don't come to you automatically i had to learn you know little by little right even though i came from an era where i played with the schools i used to make money just playing right because then i was just a student i go to school but I play music right. and I work. But now when you launch your own vision, mm -hmm. you actually let a lot of things go. Right. And people don't really hire you anymore as a drummer because they're thinking, now you are your right. own man. You are, you're, a big, you're a big star now. You, you big, yeah, you're a big boy. You used to get you know, $750 a year, $600 here. Right. Like, it all shuts down right. for you because you're like, you're the, the <laughs> own man. So you, you lose a lot of money yeah. to just starting your own vision. Got you. Now, what wh what are you currently working on, and um, what is up and coming with um, Kumu Katalai? Uh, I'm working on my first album in life will be called The Paradox, because mm -hmm. uh, my first paradox that I reserve is to Congo. Okay. Uh, Congo feeds the word, but the word neglects the Congo. Mm -hmm. Like now, uh, killings are happening in the Congo. Like in, in barely, like people are finding out now with this posting that we all did. Right. You have friends who tell you like, "Oh, I didn't know." Mm -hmm. Like. This is how much, like more than 12 million people passed. Right. But till today, people are not aware of it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so I observed that as a first paradox. And, you know, um, I might release an EP before. Okay. Because I'm working on a few songs that are now being cooked. Right. Uh, yeah, great stuff. Great Got stuff, you. I'm telling you. Got you. And, uh, and I, I want to do a subscription project where I'll teach Congolese dance and mm -hmm. people will subscribe online. Okay. Uh, you know, to get it going. Exactly. And uh, I also want to bring Congolese music on Broadway. Right. Uh, so these are some of the things that I'm working on. There you Maybe go. People, people Next. Of faith out there right. who are willing to, to think in investment mm -hmm. and, and make money on their own, they can come in. Uh, we talk. We All right. From there. So Congolese music on Broadway, that's, that's a big, big, big thing. There would definitely be something big, especially coming from someone who has spent his entire life doing, mm -hmm. supporting, and living off of Congolese music. Mm -hmm. Man, I appreciate you joining us, sir. It's been a great pleasure. You're going to have to come back eventually because we're going to have to talk about the science of dance and the science of music. We're going to have to do one show in which we're talking about one of, one of the two first and then the other one because... Man, you you almost like an a walking encyclopedia, 
And <laughs> listen, if you do, but, re- you know, I was around and I will, I'm, I'm very observant. And right. look, I play the legends, man. Like indeed. I, you know, In- Kanda, Bongo, man. Indeed. We deployed, like some of these people, sometimes we were on tour right. for like a whole month and a half in the car, just, you know, absorbing literature, challenging them with questions and, and some of the things, you know, are also you are reading books and right. to, to know, if, you know, if these are verifiable in info. And some of them, like someone like Locasa, mm-hmm. it's like a living library. Oh, the, like the only thing he spoke about as a confirming books. I don't think Locasa read those books. Right, before. right. No, de- definitely. He was there. Definitely. And, de- and that's one that's one of the guys that I actually have scheduled to also come here. We haven't, we haven't issues contacting him so i do have some people looking out to see if they can get his number to me uh one and um hopefully they'll be yeah, able to last get time him I heard to me not feeling well uh, I'll okay check in to see who, who has direct contact to see. yeah yes please if you can and, and best wishes to him uh well wishes to him also if he's not feeling well but on any event man it would be definitely an honor to be able to get that man on this show because locasa is one of those guys that we have to document a lot of what he knows in order to mm-hmm. help the African diaspora as a whole. This is a man oh, that, a library, that exactly. And, and, and I mean, this is a man who held African music in the market, in the diaspora market at a time in which it wasn't cool to do that. Mm-hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? So this guy is a starting point of something that today we all enjoy. I mean, today we have, pop artists putting out albums with um, African undertones and things of that sort. Back in those days, it wasn't that way. A lot of people didn't even know. Some people who are African descendants didn't even know where Africa was. Mm-hmm. Right? And, 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 and today is a cool thing to do. So we have to bring back those individuals that have actually walked Tape and lived that history exactly, who have paved that way, the trail the trailblazers who actually made it. Yes, sir. And now, listen, I don't want to make you late because I know that you got to get yourself in the studio. Man, I appreciate yeah. I appreciate you joining us. And listen, remember, this is home for you. So anytime you got anything new, of course, just give us a holler. We'll definitely be able to support you in any way possible. And yeah, please play clear my path as many times. Yeah, Let indeed. Know, like, the videos on YouTube. Indeed. Like, like, go support and leave a comment. Yeah. You know, chat, share, and all. We'll, we'll sure we'll sure we'll do that and uh what what, what is um something else that you want to play of yours before uh, we go Mona, uh, Ma- monamboka monamboka all right yeah. so we're gonna go out with monamboka by nkumu katalai right here on diaspora central with gil Inglés. until next time you take care of yourself Okay. Yeah.